The first gizmo adjustment is the color. This is only used when you have the pick option. We'll be taking a look at that case in just a minute, so we'll go back to our C minus green setting. The next adjustments are the red weight and the blue green weight. Now what's this blue green thing doing here? If this is a green screen, this is really just the blue weight. If it's a blue screen, this is really adjusting the green weight. These two adjustments affect the matte density. Let's take a look. We'll switch the viewer over to the alpha channel. As I slide the red weight down, the matte density gets a lot thinner. I've introduced terrible transparency in my picture. Go in the other direction, it makes it harder. We'll set that back to the default. Now it looks like the blue-green weight is not having much of an effect. That's because there's very little blue in the RGB channels. However, if I slam the gamma and show you the blue weight again, you can see it is having a small effect. So these two affect the RGB channels where there's a lot of red, this will take effect. Where there's a lot of blue, this slider will be dominant. Looking back at our composite, what we want to do is get rid of the green frill in the hair. This is coming from the green screen blending with the edge pixels. As I harden the mat up, I get more and more of the backing color mixed with the hair, which is not nice. So we're going to slide this down to color the hair till it looks nice. That looks good. We're going to take a little bit of the blue weight down, maybe to about there. And let's say we like that. We've got good hair color now. While we're talking about the red and blue weights, I wanted to show you the effect of the black patch. I'm going to dial down the black patch here and introduce this black hole. Dial it down a little bit more. Take a look at our alpha channel. If we slam the gamma, the alpha channel has a solid core where you see the black patch. I lower the black patch further, the solid core gets larger. You want to make sure that that core doesn't hit any of the semi-transparent regions of your composite. If we switch back to the compositing view, if the black patch is too large, you'll actually see it starting to poke out from underneath the character, here and there. So you want to bring that black patch down to where it doesn't show anywhere around the edge of your character. And also, sometimes it will introduce colorations in the non-solid parts, so you want to be sure and generally take that guy down to a nice solid clean black so that you get a uniform composite everywhere. All right, we'll shrink this window back here, return to our composite. Now as we saw, our red and blue weight settings have left a semi-transparent region actually in several places. We're going to, again, we'll return to that shortly by introducing a core mat to fill that in. The next adjustment we want to look at is the Luminance Match Enable. The Luminance Match Enable firms up the alpha channel in light areas, such as this highlight here, or thin wispy hair edges, or motion blurred elements. To see its effect, let's switch over to the alpha channel, and as I turn it on and off, you can see how it's beefing up the alpha channel out here in the thin areas. Also, keep an eye on this hotspot here, switch to the alpha channel, Slam the gamma, you see we have a hole in it. The luminance match enable helps to fill in that hole. So we'll put this back. Once you've done the luminance match enable, you now have to adjust the screen range. Watch what happens when I move the screen range slider to the left. You see it cleared the noise out of the backing region, but it also is hardening up the edges of the mat. You can see that here. So what's the adjustment for the screen range? What you do is you lower the screen range until it stops changing the background. You can see there's no change down here. So you find the spot where the backing just stops changing and you leave the screen range right there. If there's too much noise left in the backing region, you may want to degrain the green screen before pulling the key. The next adjustment, the luminance level, you can ignore. It really doesn't have much of an effect and in fact is not very effective at all, and I understand is going to be removed from the next version of the IBK keyer. Coming down here to the auto levels, the auto levels toggle is used for special cases of supersaturated colors. We don't have any in this particular composite, so we're going to take a look at that in a minute on another test. For the last section, we want to look at our composite and these three toggles down here. 
None of these toggles have any effect on the alpha channel at all. They all affect just the pixel edges, the blending edges around the perimeter of the mat. The first one, Screen Subtraction, defaults on. It's subtracting the backing color from the edges of your composite. If you turn it off, all of a sudden we can see lots of nasty green pixels. Normally, you're going to leave this on. This is not spill suppression. The IBK Gizmo has no spill suppression, and if you have green spill in the interior of your character, you're going to want to add your own spill suppression after the IBK Gizmo node. Now let's take a look at this toggle, Use Background Luminance. Turning this on and off, causes the IBK gizmo to factor in, remember the background is connected here, so it factors in the background pixel colors into the output for the foreground. Turning it on, it'll actually brighten or darken the edges based on whatever the background is. Now this may or may not improve your composite. This last toggle uses the chroma or color from the background to influence the edges of the composite. You may have one or both turned on or both turned off, whatever looks best. In this particular case, having them both off seems to look nice. Now it's time to take a look at the transparency in our alpha channel, putting this hideous mark on our face. We'll switch to the alpha channel and slam the gamma so we can see our transparency. You can fill in with the core mat any way you like with any keyer. You could use another IBK keyer. You could use Primat anything you want to fill in the core mat here. So I'm going to hook in my core mat to the IPK gizmo, and we'll take a look at that. You can see I have a much firmer alpha channel now compared to the IPK gizmo output. So we'll turn the viewer gamma back to normal, switch to the RGB channels, and you can see that they're absolutely identical. The only difference is I've firmed up the mat. When we look at the composite, I can now switch the input of the composite to my core mat and fill in the transparency problems. Back to the original IBK alpha channel, my core mat channel. So there we have it. Now let's take a look at our finished composite by doing a render. Nuke has cached the entire shot now, and as you can see we have very nice hair detail, nice clean edges, and a very firm alpha channel. Of course, you're going to want to add your own edge blending, light wraps, and other visual effects, but this is your basic IBK keyer workflow, a very nice composite. We'll stop that, restore our view. Let's clear this to take a look at the Auto Levels toggle, which we spoke about earlier. The Auto Levels is designed to cope with very saturated colors. We didn't have any in our current composite, so I've prepared this test pattern so you can see the effect. When supersaturated colors like these are keyed and composited, the results tend to give you dark edges or colored fringes. The Auto Levels toggle is designed to cope with this. It trims the mat to shrink it down to get rid of these artificial edges. The Auto Levels toggle is over here, and it enables all the other three. So with it turned off, none of these have any effect at all. I turn the auto levels on and you can see it got rid of the dark edges, but it's also introduced some discolorations in the cyans and the yellows. There you go. Also, if we look at the alpha channel, when I turn on the auto levels, I lose opacity in the same yellows and cyans in the alpha channel. So to guard against that, you turn on the auto levels and if you want to protect the yellows, you click the yellow button. So that protects the yellows from the auto level setting. If you want to protect the cyans, you turn on the cyan button. With both of these toggles turned on, you've completely disabled the whole auto levels algorithm. It's the same as having it turned off entirely. So in a composite, if you have those dark or colored fringes, try the auto levels button to see if it helps. More than likely, it'll help one part of the picture, but ruin the rest of the composite. So what you'll have to do is, Isolate the area that it helps and composite that separately from the rest of the picture.